Well, it's well into the evening here at Shelburne Park on this Friday night, but myself and Kevin Hennessy have plenty to talk about. We're after seeing the first eight heats of the second round of the Boyle Sports Irish Greyhound Derby. You thought the opening round was good, but wait till you see the second round. Some sensational displays, Kevin, and it all started at the very top with Kulavani Hoffa, but from start to finish, just great racing. Oh, it was fantastic, wasn't it? Um, we didn't have to wait long. Um, you knew he was doing a run, didn't you? Really, half it down the back straight. It was electric. I was saying to you here before we started that I didn't think he had that caliber of early pace. Um, you, you said you were fairly confident he always had it. I always liked him to the third bend, but tonight just blew me away. He, he went up in plenty of people's books tonight, but like you said, he, he wet the appetite and there was plenty of a real good performance in behind him as well. Yeah, some great performances here tonight. But let's start with Kulavani Hoffa. Um, it was stunning. You know, I, I've been saying for a while we haven't seen the same sort of sections this year. You know, 341, I think, was the fastest run in the opening round. You know, normally you get a low 330s. You know, 338 Kulavani Hoffa did. You know, in another year it could have been a 330. But 1680 to the third bend. We were just talking about beforehand. We don't know if any dog's ever gone faster. Pastana did a 1683 tonight. He broke the clock. So that would suggest there's probably never been a faster run than 1680 to third bend. And he was doing every inch of it. Yeah, when you, when you put it like that, like what would you say to someone the night that Pastana done the clock if you said that in a couple of years' time there's a dog that'll do a length slower to the first sectional in 338 <laughs> and be quicker again to the third bend. You wouldn't believe it. That's the sort of run this was tonight. It, it blew you away. Good old Beach Avenue in behind. I, I was scratching my head half down the back straight, wondering why he hasn't made any sort of dent. In he, the... he looked like he was on the beach <laughs> yeah, at the second yeah. bend and then all of a sudden he arrived with a rush late. Yeah. And, but into the third bend, I was like, will you get going? I couldn't understand why he couldn't make any impression. But when the clock came up, I, I, I understood exactly why. It, it was one of those... I didn't think we'd see the likes, the performances like we saw. We were treated to some wonderful displays over the last couple of years. New and Taylor, Pistana, Susie. This is up there. This is up at the very best that they've done. It was an incredible performance. You just see how far he's ahead of the rest of the heats tonight on the clock. It just tells you like there's brilliant ground here, and he was just mind blowing tonight. And and yeah, in behind Ballymac run a November 20, yeah. she ran some cracker. I was talking to Shane after the race. I got the impression from Shane that they expected her and they always thought that she had that sort of run in her Beach Avenue what can you say he's just an old warrior he, he plugs away and qualifies again Bally Mac run out of JT Pearl you yeah. know plenty about yeah. her yeah yeah no I, she's well bred <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bally Mac run actually ran a big big race and you think to yourself she's only beaten six lengths in 2013 mm -hmm. but if you take the traffic she found at, at the bend last week she's probably doing a similar run you know so it yeah. highlights the fact that Kulavani Hoffa wasn't the track was fast it was just he was going sensationally quick and as you said the rest of the runs in the card backed it up Beach Avenue, magnificent run in third. As I said, out on the beach at the second bend, looked dead and buried, and just came with a rush. Like to be beaten only a length behind Bally Mac Run is some running. Um, what a warrior! What a yeah, warrior! Yeah, and to pass like we can dream, like 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 he's f a fair greyhound in his own right. Like he looked a, a potential Derby contender and. But like, as I often say to the lads, when he's in your kennel, you love him. I'd say anyone else, you'd probably hate him because he, he has a tendency to put good dogs out. Yeah, if you're a third down the back straight, <laughs> Beach Avenue's behind you, you're yeah, in trouble. Yeah. Uh, on to the second, he talking about good greyhounds, explosive boy. Just imagine owning this fellow. Yeah. You know, this was his 39th career start, his 23rd win. He's been second eight times and third three times. He has won whatever you need to win. He's won a, a produce stakes, a select stakes, a Dundalk International, Kirby finalist, Derby finalist, dog of the year, and it goes on and on yeah. and on. He's a stronger running greyhound this year, and this was evident in this run because while he did flash out of boxes, that was the old explosive boy. One time only showed great pace to challenge him into the third bend, but he broke one time's only his heart. He just couldn't get by him, and once that, once he didn't get by, his heart was broken. He faded out of contention, and Explosive Boy skipped on again up the home straight to win by three links in 29.40. As you like, I'm in the third round, and Pat Gilfoyle and Cheryl and Peter Sutcliffe are more than happy. Just what a greyhound. In second, Magical Kuba, a 1-2 for Pat Gilfoyle, running on very well, and three, Droopy's Gravy, who ran a big, big race in defeat. You know, I heard a few things. Robert Leeson thinks a lot of this dog. Like yeah. he, he was a 25 to 1 chance this week. Didn't run like one. No, definitely not. And I was talking, we spoke about this, about Explosive Boy here last week, saying that he, his running side has slightly changed. And I met Pat over the far side on the, on the back wall just before this race. And he too even said it that his running style has changed. He thinks maybe he's a little bit calmer now than he was, a bit more mature, which is why he's staying so much better than he ever did as a young dog. And then, um, like, 
I even said it like he's, he's won over 575 as a young dog he never dreamed of running him over 575 it looked like at one point he wouldn't stay 525 in his <laughs> early days <laughs> exactly and and I, I put the marker on it because I even said to Pat I said, yeah he seems to have lost that flashing from the boxes tonight one time only a champion stakes winner in two he flashes out holds him to the corner that was the key to the race when one time only didn't get across him had they been drawn differently, who knows, but they were, the way they were, an explosive boy held his line, took command of the race, and one time only threw everything at him. He tried so hard to clear him, he never did, ran out of steam with the stairs in behind. Magical Cuba, for me, was one of the most eye-catching dogs tonight. Now, I say that sort of with an asterisk because I didn't realise he runs as wide as he ran tonight. Now, if he continues to throw away that sort of ground, I'd worry for him, however, that had true with three, four lengths running wide off the opening two bends there tonight. And to, to back run explosive by the way he did, and, we, and we're just talking about how much stronger he is now. Now, I know he was in a battle with one time only, but I really liked him tonight. Uh, I know he won last week, 29.50, beaten two in a row. Tonight, I think he even ran better again. And like you said, Ruby's Gravy was showing all sorts of pace into the third bend. Got closed off a little bit there, but came again to qualify. And yeah, definitely won't be as big a price next week as it was tonight. Certainly not. We'll move on to Heat 3. Um, this was, you know, obviously Cool Event Calvin was, it was disappointing he was withdrawn, but you know, it remained a, a contest of, of some quality. In my report, I wrote like Callaway Pro Am turned up the, the young pretender. And he's not a young pretender anymore. He's mm. after. This was a run, this was a statement performance behind him, two track record holders, a classic winner, a derby runner up, and a, and a grade one winner in, in Bacco's Budsit Race of Champions. So this was a quality field. Bacco's Budsit had hit the ground running, and for all the world looked like he was gonna go around in front, but no, Callaway Pro-Am matched him and bettered him into the opening corner to go to the front. And once doing so, well, we said last week that he's a good, strong, one pace greyhound. I think he's more than that. He showed loads of early speed tonight. Just looked a proper greyhound. This is a dog that, could definitely develop into a serious derby contender for a young man called Owen McKenna who won it last year with Susie Sapphire. He wouldn't do it again, would he? Well, he's had to turn this dog into, I was literally just having a conversation about it. I watched this dog very closely, as I said last week, in the unracing of Kenny and in Turles. He looked to me like he had good pace everywhere. If you told me that Bacchus Budson would, would come out like he did tonight, I didn't think any dog in this derby could go up his inside and take the bend off him. Really, really, really impressive. He looks like whatever Owen's training style is, Pistana, Susie, he's able to get them to go to the corner. And this lad is absolutely flying into the bend. 17.01 to the third bend. And, and, and he did brush shoulders with um, Bacchus Budson at the corner. So you could say he was doing, he could do 16.95 or 16.90 maybe to the third bend. That's absolutely flying. Um, Tied up a small bit coming home in my opinion, but from what I had seen previously, but yeah, this dog, a dog I've always liked, he's only getting better and he really wants it, you can tell, and, and he's in shrewd hands, all right. Yeah, Bacchus Butz has beaten, uh, I think it's only a couple of lengths, so he's doing a 29.47 run, nothing wrong with it, yeah. you know, he can still go to a corner, he's still running hard, he didn't lead tonight over 550 yards, and to be still pitching off the final bend is testament to the Greyhound, he can certainly go a long way in the derby, and Hanover Phantom really yeah. dug in. Oh, you know, he, he's such a strong running greyhound, like 550 yard record holder at, at um, Galway. He needed every bit of that power tonight because Sentimental Lad and Sing Along Sally, while it didn't happen for them early, Sentimental Lad did some running. To lose out in the place in the derby third round by a short head after giving them a five length head start completely fell out of boxes. You have to feel for the Heenies. Oh, massively. And and listen, it, 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 it's, a, it's a lesser derby without him. Uh, if not just for the dog, but for what Michael and Eva bring to it. Like everyone loves the cracky get out of Michael, and it was devastating. Like the dog just freak break and completely missed it and like you said in a heat of that quality you think he's no chance and he's gone out by the shortest of margins it was it was devastating and sing along Sally a special mention for the runner up last year she's run a cracker again or she's run she's running well at the moment just didn't happen for her in this heat but Bacchus Buds it we mentioned last week that he kicked better off the third bend than he had in previous starts he dug in tonight again when it didn't go his way he didn't lead they're all feathers in his cap because we know what he can do from the front. Yeah, sign of a good greyhound. Yeah, very much. Um, sing along, Sally. We do have to give her a mention. I, yeah. I hope it's not her swan song. Yeah. I hope it's not her swan song. I hope we see her again. If if it is, oh, what a servant. She's just been an absolute superstar. On to Heat 4. And uh, again, another power pack display. Um, Romeo Magico charged traps. He missed the kick. He found traffic on the bend and found a bit of space off the second bend and went whoosh. This dog last year was a dog where if he got trouble and bothered, mm -hmm. no, I'm, it's not happening for me. Mm -hmm. He's just such a different dog this year. We saw it in the Easter Cup. Of course, we saw it at Toaster, brilliant winner of the English Derby. I was so impressed with him tonight and last week. You know, 
everything that went wrong for him tonight, the pace he showed down the back straight. You know, that Scooby Duchess is cruising by before halfway. And then Ben Medina Roxy, he, he just coasted around the outsider, skips on to win by five lengths in 29.54, happy as you like. There's a 29.20 and no question about that, and that can win a derby. Yeah, no, I think he was a better dog in the Easter Cup than he was last year. He was a better dog in Toaster than he was in the Easter Cup. I think he looks like a better dog here. Obvious concern, the trapping, that he's charged it the last twice. That's easily explained coming from, from England. Different mechanisms, Mecha the hair. The hair goes past, yeah. all those reasons. So I'd, I'd pardon him that, but what he did to Derby, quality greyhounds down the back straight tonight was mind blowing. He was, he looked like, yeah, he'll qualify. He'll get into third or second. He was in front of the third bend. He took the third bend off them. It was remarkable to watch. Not many, you, you do your back straight clocks and all the clocks, I'd say he was doing what he was. He was around joint fastest down the back straight last week with Balnabola Ed. I'd say I don't know too many were yeah, matching him. Maybe Kulavani yeah, Hoffa, considering yeah, exactly. what he was doing. But no, it was a fantastic performance. Like 17 28, he gave them five lengths at the start of, like, uh, for his standards. Because like, we know he can come out through the bars. Like, he, he has that early pace. So yeah, if you're, if you're Dave Furmature now or Graham, I'm sure you're. you're concerned about the traps but you're very very happy this dog seems to have just be gaining confidence so much last year a little bit frustrating from time to time often made the wrong move he's not making that this year um fantastic ground the fluency around the third bend is very encouraging as well that's yeah. a pl point in a race where he's had problems in the past but just absolutely fluent beautiful mover Top class greyhound. Um, heat five. This was a great tussle. Um, Kilgraney Sydney and Mustang Jet. Like Kilgraney Sydney goes out of the Derby and yet runs one of his mm. finest ever races. Yeah. Um, he didn't get his flying start, but he challenged Mustang Jet into the corner, and the two of them went absolutely hammer and tongs down the back straight. And at the third bend, Mustang Jet just got the better of the argument in behind Crafty Kokoro who was a bit closer than she normally would be at that point. The race has stopped in her tracks. Obviously, she's going to finish hard again, but get going again yeah. is the impressive part about it. She's beaten narrowly in a photo finish, looking at it on screens afterwards. You'd think she was up, yeah. but that's just the trick of the eye because yeah. you sort of automatically look at that three strides after the line. She looked like she's well in front, but Mustang Jet continues to roll on for Dolores. Was, I'm sure she's delighted with him. I'd say there's plenty in the locker. Oh yeah, well Dolores was saying that last week, and, and he's he 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 has it all really, doesn't he? He starts he starts well, he's good back straight pace, and he kicks again after last bend. As unlucky a dog to go out tonight is is Kilgraney Sydney. He just couldn't get the better of Mustang Jet anywhere it seemed, and it wasn't for the want to try. And he tried everything, it just didn't happen for him. And from all that tussling up front, he fell back into the lap of the two stairs. And like you said, Crafty Kokoro, she, she's won the Cork Cullen here, we know what she's all about. She turned in a lovely pitch off the second bend. I thought at that point she nearly could go on and win the race. Obviously the traffic bottoms at the third bend stopped her. And Droopy's rocker as well. I, thought, that I was going to get to him. Yeah. For him to hold Crafty Kokoro as easy as, as he did, did to the yeah. third bend yeah. was very impressive. Yeah. He stayed on strongly again. This could develop into a serious greyhound. It's only his seventh career start tonight. I know he's in August, so he's a little bit of age on the side but it was a hell of a run massive massive like like crafty kokoro we know what she's going to do from halfway she is going to finish as fast as anything in the derby and he was right there with her only his seventh race he you'd imagine he can only get better yeah uh, mustang jet though is through he remains unbeaten and uh, crafty kokoro it's gonna be hard to knock her out definitely on to heat six here macho pride was a big price I had I'd, I'd mentioned this to a few people during the week. I thought he ran a hell of a race last week. Forced a check on heels off the second bend. I, I'll admit, the 14 to 1 sucked me in. I just had to have a little nibble. Droopy's nice one. Didn't quite get the start she, she, she normally would get. And she sort of. She, she looked like she was in the position to win off the second bend, but then she ran a little bit wide and then she cut back in and she just gave away a little bit of ground at very important parts. Meanwhile, Macho Pride, despite getting plenty of bother early from, from Gaga Carla, had forced his way to the front and he'd quickly gone two or three lane clear like a classy animal. And he showed real good speed to get to the front and then to dig in to contain Drupy's nice one. A deserving winner, Coleco Phelps running on strongly again, as you'd expect, to grab third spot. But I think this one was about Macho Bride. Yeah, it was. And, and he, like you said, he had to really battle. Gaga Carla came out well, led to the to the first line in a 3.49. And Macho Bride had to force his way through, and, and he did that for Kieran. And, and once getting to the front, you knew Drupy's nice one was always going to come at him. I had a similar opinion. I thought nice one sort of couldn't really seem to be a little bit indecisive but when I did go back and watch the replay in fairness Macho Pride completely drifts off the last bend right out into her line so she then and checked she had in, to yeah. check in it, I thought that initially when I watched it I was like I was disappointed nearly the nice one didn't pick him up 
But when I went back and watched the replay, Macho Pride completely drifts off, takes her line. She has, to, in fairness, she's no other choice but to jump back in. It, it could have cost her the race, but at the same time, Macho Pride done very little wrong, and, and you have an extra few quid in your pocket going home. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. Uh, moving on to the next race, Heat 7. Bocco's Crystal, franking the form, one would suggest, of Crafty Kokoro from last week. Uh, this lady, it didn't happen for her at Traps last time. This time, she did break fast. She she didn't quite lead in the opening yards, but she got to the front into the bend. Price's Jet, Niso, fantastic, turning in behind her. There's traffic in the inside. Ruby Edison missed the kick. I'm sure Robert is just, you know, opportunity missed with that dog. If he could done him back a few weeks earlier, probably, you know, we, didn't, we haven't seen the best. There's no question. We haven't seen the best of him here at Shelburne Park. But Bocco's Crystal, once she went to the front, you knew she was going to be very, very tough nut to crack. Now Price's Jet did get after her, and he ran a very encouraging race once again. At the third bend, he's on the outside, and we know what he likes. Yeah. He likes to be in the inside there. <laughs> yeah. and he just once he didn't get by her there, yeah. he wasn't going to get by her again. Yeah. I dare say, still a bit in the locker with Price's Jet, but Bacchus Crystal, just a thoroughly likable display out front. Very gallant, very gutsy. Dug in, wins well. This is 17 18, 29 65. Happy days into the next round. Yeah, she's a lovely bitch, isn't she? She's only having her ninth race, and, and you have to say, for, for Priceless Jet to turn pretty close to her off the second bend for an August puppy only having her ninth race it's a, it's a fair marker now to hold him yeah look I'm over the moon with prices Jet um, it was a big run out of him last week obviously off the back of an English Derby campaign he was a little bit tired not a whole lot done with him I knew he'd run out of steam exactly like you Ian I thought if he if he cleared her to the third bend he'd win and knew when he didn't get by her he was never going to get by her he just tied up a little bit coming home but over the moon to qualify Ice are fantastic again a dog we spoke about last week how he came yeah, out Mickey Kors done, <laughs> he he done it before he has done it before he has and he went under the radar completely with me in a miracle and he's, he's he's getting some tune out with this lad as well now this lad is a little bit more exposed than what Mina was at the time but he's, he's doing very very little wrong Bacchus Crystal a real eye catcher I'm very happy with Price's Jet and anyone that did back Price's Jet I hope you do with Boyle Sports because money back if you were second and I hope you got your money back. Absolutely. Uh, Bocco's Crystal is, is a half-sister to Sentimental Lad, so oh. the family is still represented. Uh, and so to the final heat of the round, and you know, sadly, we lost one of the leading fancies here. Good Cody took a tumble. He's fine. He got up straight away, galloped on strongly. He was just the meat and the sandwich in those first few strides. Um, galloping Sydney edged into him, and that sort of allowed Skywalker Sydney up the inside, or uh, Skywalker Barry, should I say, up the inside, get first run. But again, Stefan's Rock, that first stride or two, he's not great. When he gets racing, he gets racing. I was talking to Shay Campbell tonight, and he said, "What do you think?" I said, "I think you're tough. I think it's a tough, tough draw. I think mean, you need to be doing things right." Well, he did do things right. I, I had one of you quit them last week, so I just had to have a, a little nibble just as well at a big price. But it was just—I mean—a tokenistic bet, and he slipped around in front. And despite the best efforts of Skywalker Barry. There was no stopping Stefan's Rock. He's just a nice, hard-running greyhound. 29.77. It doesn't matter about the time. Just a good run. Shea Campbell, I'm sure, is skipping home once again. And so are you, but the sounds of things. But yeah, look, we, we spoke what Shea said to me last week. He's not he's not a brilliant trapper, but he said, Kevin, if this little comes out, he said he, he's lightning to the third bend. He he thinks he's better than the rocket dog he had in it last year. We know how good he was. So, yeah, look, the storyline here is, is so unfortunate for good Cody. It really is. I don't think it, any of it was at his, his own doing. Um, the four dog just moved in as an inside seed, moved in straight away out of the boxes, and then just cut his nose off at the at the at the first bend the clip heels i met john kendy and his family walking across the track and i can tell you they are delighted going home and, and i know that might sound silly with the dog got knocked out but they're so relieved that he got up ran around not not a problem with the dog i'm sure they'll dust him down and, and look at the laurels and a ledger at the end of the year but my heart was in my mouth now when, when he took the fall but i was delighted to see him back up you need these these top caliber dogs and his day will come again he's a superstar greyhound it just wasn't meant to be this year but take nothing away from stefan's rock the three young lads over the far side were roaring <laughs> down the back and all the way home so to them it was like winning the derby tonight again and, and I heard them complaining about that they had a trophy last week a trophy tonight that where they're going to put them but I'm sure they'll that, make that, plenty that's of That's a space. good complaint a very exactly, good complaint yeah. uh, Skywalker Barry he continues to, to roll on what a start he's been um, he's in October 18 so he's approaching his, his fourth birthday but he still retains all his ability Yeah I thought there was a bit more spark about him tonight I really did um, ran well last week when things didn't go his way but more into the corner I thought it was more like the old Barry now maybe I'd have to watch 
watch the replay a couple more times, but I thought he showed a bit more of himself into the bend to pace up well, because we know how good Stefan's Rock is into the corner. To me, it looked like Barry's coming back. You know, let's see what he does again next week, but like we know how good he is. It hasn't been his year or the last couple of months, but he's he's a superstar when he gets it right. I thought it was a big step in the right direction. A bullet from a gun, I thought we spoke about last week, who ran a massive race at a big price, runs a massive race again at a big price to qualify, and is still in the half for Brendan Mansell. Uh, Sarah told a story on Monday uh, in the podcast that um, the owners, even though they hadn't won, they insisted on coming over and get a picture with the dog. <laughs> so now they're into the third round of the derby. Yeah. You can be absolutely certain they're going to be celebrating tonight again. And he's a wide seed, probably have his draw in the next round. You never know. They could have a derby quarterfinalist, you know, by the end of next Saturday night. But that's it. Eight heats covered. You know, it's... It's safe to say that Kulavani Hoffa is now Derby favourite. It's going to take a hell of a run from something on Saturday night. I think only perhaps Balnabola Ed or a Vincenzo perhaps could produce something to maybe knock him off the top. But I would suggest these uh, long odds on to be favourite for the Derby come Monday morning. Ah, oh, yeah, like it's maybe Balnabola Ed, um, but even at that, like. It's, it's going to take something special. Like he's doing Pastana clocks to the third bend, he's doing. 29 13 to the line. He's a wide seed. Everyone is talking about that this will be suited. You made a comparison last week to, to Loghill Blake. He looked like a potential derby winner tonight to me. Yeah, Loghill Blake never doing a 16 80 no. 29 13. Still won a derby. <laughs> That's true. Listen, folks, we've only seen the first half of the second round of the Boyle Sports Irish Greyhound Derby, and it was something special. Just wait for Saturday night.